Uh, our next speaker is one of Cambridge's very own, Miss Tarani. She is one of our school's most beloved teachers, and if you ask any of her bio students, they will tell you they take the subject just because of her. You can find her talking about almost anything from gene technology to neuroplasticity. But right now, she's here to question to which uh, she's here to question the extent to which our experiences affect our perception and our intelligence. Mr. Tarani. It is amazing how my previous two speakers spoke about believing in themselves. What I'm going to speak today will just reiterate your necessity to believe in yourself. I would like to start this talk by posing two questions. How many of you seated here can link your disinterest to a subject, to a personal bad experience? I can see several hands. And do you believe that bad experiences can limit your learning? I get an affirmative to this. I've been pondering over these two questions on and off for some 30 years. Why 30 years and why specifically these two questions? To better understand this, I would like to take you back to the year I was in grade six. I had this new math teacher who suddenly out of the blues decided that she was going to train our young minds to think fast. And her strategy for this was testing in mental math. And that too, mental algebra. From my tone, you can guess how that test went. I flunked. I was a student who always talked her class, taught my class, rather. And to me, failing was a big thing. But I did not allow it to get me down, because that's typically me. I would sulk for a few days, then get up, dust myself, and say, hey, enough of self-pity, march forward. But in this particular instance, I found myself not only being down, and several years down the lane, I realized, to a certain extent, I had allowed her to get me down. What exactly happened? I distinctly recall her harsh words to me. She said, it still rings in my ears, I do not know what the fuss is all about, you being the most promising student of your class, when to me, you're just plain dumb because you couldn't do mental math. Is it any wonder, years later, that I, my favorite subject is still not math? What have I done? I had allowed her disbelief in me to translate into an effect in my life. In other words, I had allowed her to define and limit my intelligence. Did I have a reason for allowing her to limit my intelligence? Back then, I thought I did. I belonged to that generation that thought we were made this way. I thought I had a genetic predisposition, big word, to being dumb in math or not being able to do very well in math. But knowing what I know now, I realize it's not right. I might have a genetic predisposition, but I'm not fated to stay that way. And why? Brings me close to the subject that has always been my passion, human body, and one organ in particular that has never failed to fascinate me over the years, the brain. 
the brain is a remarkable organ. In the past 15 years, we've come to know more about the brain than we have done in all of previous history. And much of it can be attributed to the latest advancements in technology, such as MRI scans, and what we have done is made astounding discoveries, and one of them is what I'm going to talk about, that your brain is constantly changing. Your brain is changing. Changing in response to what? Response to the input that you give it. Response to your emotions, your learning experiences, can I have a glass of water? My, my mouth is going dry. Your brain is constantly changing in response to the input that you give it in response to your experiences, your emotions, your beliefs, and most importantly, the learning experience and the learning environment that you provide it with. Neuroscientists have a great word for this. It's a buzzword for them, neuroplasticity. Neuro obviously means the brain. Plastic? Are we talking about plastic brains? No. What we are talking about is the malleable brain or the malleable ability of the brain. So what is malleability? Nothing but what I just mentioned, changeable nature of the brain. So what is actually happening? When I say the brain is malleable, it is changing. It is changing how? Physically, chemically, and functionally. Now, to better illustrate this, I would like to give you an example. Let us compare two brains, that of a dancers and a non-dancers. If you look at the dancer's brain, what is happening in his or her brain is there's a system being created what is the system? New nerve cells are being formed. These nerve cells are actually making connections with other nerve cells, which we call establishing connections. And these nerve cells are also strengthening their connections. You don't find this in a non-dancer's brain. So what did this dancer do differently? What he did was, when he had a desire to do or acquire an ability, he went forward with focus, with determination, concentration, hard work, and constant practice. He created that system. So, what does it say about for us? What we need to do is the same thing. Provide our nerve cells with a stimulating environment. Provide our brain with a stimulating environment. How do we go about doing this? Provide it with the right learning experience. When you strengthen these connections for these nerve cells, what you have is long-term memory. When these connections are not strengthened, what you have is short-term memory which are going to lose along the way. So what is memory? Brings me to what is memory then? Memory is nothing but your ability to retain and store information. So what is intelligence? Intelligence, has anyone got an answer? OK. Intelligence is the ability to retrieve that information, manipulate it, and use it to sort of solve your problems. 
So he's good at math need not necessarily be that he's more intelligent than you. It's just that he is able to retrieve that information quickly enough and he's able to solve his problems quickly enough. And how does he do that? Because he has been stimulating his brain with the right kind of environment. So memory and intelligence are actually two sides of the same coin. Improve your memory, improve your intelligence. So we don't have an excuse anymore saying that we have a genetic predisposition for just not doing well in a particular thing. You want to acquire an ability? Go ahead and acquire one. So how do I go around improving my memory and then my intelligence? First and foremost, what I need to remember is, good news is that our brains make physical changes based on the repetitive things we do and the experiences we have. So more consistent and repetitive your learning experience is, better it is for the brain. So when you decide to acquire an ability, it all begins with your desire to acquire an ability. Acquire, if you want to acquire, go ahead with focus, with determination, concentration, hard work, and constant practice acquire it. Do not ever, ever give up. Bad news is that our brains make physical changes based on the repetitive things that it does. So, do not allow negative words, negative thoughts, negative habits rob you of the pleasure of learning and improving your intelligence. Negative words is what I did. Years after, if I'm still not interested in math, it was because I allowed these negative words to get to me. Do not allow it. You know much more about the brain today than I did back then. Negative thoughts. I'm not good at it. I will never be good at it. It's just not in me. Do not allow it to get to you. Negative habits. I'm actually most interested in this because what I've seen over my almost 30 years of teaching, I've seen students go down this way. And I would, it is for them that I'm addressing this more. Do not spend quality, productive time aimlessly texting. Going to bed very late. Your brain needs to rejuvenate just like the rest of you. Give it the rest that it requires. Do not allow such smoking. Do not allow these habits to get to you because they are toxins you're basically putting into your body, into your brain, and your brain is getting affected by it. The next one is stay motivated with positive action-oriented thoughts till they become your mindset, your default mindset. Keep telling yourself, you can do it, you will do it, and you will achieve it. Aim high. We are the only self-directed organisms on this planet. So, aim high. Desire to achieve well and do it. Challenge your brain. This is the most important thing. Challenge your brain by constantly learning new facts. Your brain works well when it's constantly challenged. As one eminent physicist put it, do not pursue, I'm just paraphrasing what he said, do not pursue the goals that you can easily achieve. Rather, work hard at pursuing those that you can achieve only with the greatest efforts. His brain still evokes a lot of interest amongst the neuroscientists. None other, he is none other than Albert Einstein. Having established this, that your brain and your intelligence is not hardwired at any age, it is up to you and me to just sit up and take responsibility for our brains. It is in you and in me to allow this 
morphing ability or the changing ability of the brain to work for us. Stop giving excuses. We don't have excuses anymore. To conclude, I would say we are the architect of our own brains. So sculpt well. Thank you.